Morning, everybody. Let's all stand as we begin our worship to God this morning. I stand to praise you, but I fall on my knees. My spirit is willing. But my flesh is so weak, like the fire in my soul. Let the flame make me whole. Don't you know where I've been? So like the fire in my heart again. I feel your arms around me. As the power of your healing begins, your spirit moves right through me like a mighty rushing wind, like the fire in my soul, and the flame make me whole. Lord, you know. fire in my heart again, like the fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole, Lord you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your way, days and step by step. You'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I will learn to walk in your way, days and step by step. You'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And step by step, you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Well, 
Let's pray. My Lord and my God, I just thank you so much for just always being there for us, for always watching over us. I thank you for this day when we can gather together and we can just worship and praise you. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we have uh, many prayers and you don't know what those are. We continue to say them, but we know that you heard them first and you're going to answer those. We thank you so much that you do answer our prayers. Lord, I would especially like to pray for our elders, deacons, preachers, and their wives. We know that they do such a great job for us and they lead us in the path that you want us to go. Lord, I also pray for those who couldn't be here today because they're sick and or traveling. We know that you can touch them with your healing hand and you can just keep them safe on their way home. Lord, we just... Uh, love this time that we can come together and just sing songs of praise to you. Lord, we know that uh, you bless us in so many ways. We thank you especially for your son. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. So this next song, the next really two songs we're going to sing are prepare our minds for the communion, but I googled a uh, uh, what would be a good verse to sing about amazement? And this one popped up, which I don't know if I've ever read. So Habakkuk 1.5 says, Look among the nations and see, wonder, and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. And so that's, a, that's pretty neat, uh, what was written back in the Old Testament times, and we know that God is working even today. So this next song we're going to talk about uh, being amazed, and uh, really for the sacrifice that, that Jesus had for us and uh, all the, the gifts and the blessings that come with that. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of light to comfort him in the sorrows he bore for my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I at last shall see. Will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, 
How wonderful is my Savior's love for me. I am mine no more. I am mine no more. I've been bought with blood. I am mine no more. Jesus is. supper I think of things like grace and mercy and redemption these are gifts that we uh, are given uh, by God <clears throat> and uh, so I think it's uh, important to focus on that uh, at this time I'm going to uh, read a brief scripture here from Romans chapter 4 Romans chapter 5 uh, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, just at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might dare, possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Or, if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled <clears throat> to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So I think this is a real good summary of uh, these gifts that we've received uh, from God through uh, this sacrifice of Jesus. We take this time to remember that. So I'll take this time to offer a prayer for the bread. <coughs> Father, as we come to you in prayer, we're thankful for the uh, great sacrifice that you've given through your son on the cross. We partake of this bread today to represent his body that was um, hung on the cross and um, was sacrificed for us. We are grateful for the grace and mercy that you've shown us and that we've been reconciled back to you. We've been redeemed. And uh, these are gifts that we're truly grateful for. We're thankful that we have a relationship with you through your son. It's his name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Um, let's pray for the cup. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for this uh, great time to uh, get together and uh, worship you and uh, appreciate the uh, suffering that uh, your son uh, had on the cross. And uh, uh, we just uh, know that that was uh, a gift from you. And uh, pray that uh, we can take this time and uh, help appreciate the blood that he spilt for us uh, through uh, the cup. And uh, we just pray for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, sometimes uh, we uh, overlook people just because people are spaced out. There's one person here and 12 over there. So did anybody get overlooked? Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll have a prayer now for the offering. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for sending your son on the cross to die for us and then rise, be raised from the dead three days later. Please help this offering remind us of that as it is our way of giving back to you. And in Jesus' name, amen. We have a few announcements while the plates are being passed. Um, first, I'd like to say, uh, isn't it great to have our young people involved in the table? I, I, I think this church should be commended for their outreach to our youth. And, uh, and, father, and we see these people growing up, and uh, eventually they serve in, in even greater ways. So uh, please encourage them. Uh, first announcement is the church building is, uh, we're building a website, or rebuilding the website, and we'd like to introduce photos uh, from recent events. Please email the photos or do what, what uh, or use the Google uh, site. There's a Google Drive. If you call Matt or uh, the church office, they'll give you that information on how to do that. Uh, but they'd like to have those pictures included if you have some that, are, that you think are worthy. Uh, life group is today, and we've been looking forward to this and preparing for it, and uh, you're all invited to participate. 
If you do not have a life group assigned to you, please uh, let one of the, the folks, in, anybody in the building know uh, that you're interested and we'll get you hooked up. Uh, if you don't know where those life groups are, just uh, contact uh, some of the leaders, I, I guess, and they'll tell you where the, the uh, current life groups are meeting. Um, let's see, uh, save the date. Game night for all ages will be held on Friday, October 27th in the Fellowship Hall. And uh, uh, the church building will be closed on October 19th for my, for my, uh, my wife's birthday. Oh, and the carpets are going to be cleaned. Um, uh, be sure to schedule uh, any meetings around that day. Also, remember that the budget requests for 2024 are due. Uh, those who, are bu who have budgets um, should have received an email from Scott Laird. If you, did not if you did not receive an email but have budget requests, please see Scott Laird. We're going to get those included into the overall budget for the, for the year. Um, and then finally, um, uh, the Billings Youth Rally uh, is, is coming up. Uh, I don't have the date for that. Anybody have the date for that? 22 to 22nd. Okay, and the, so if you'd like to register for that, you can go to the Billings um, Church of Christ website and register. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Today's uh, scripture reading is from 1 Thessalonians, it's, uh, chapter 2, verses 6 through 12. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and our hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteousness, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually. Let's all stand as we sing this next song. Scott's going to be speaking today about living like Jesus and being that example in our lives. And so this song epitomizes that as uh, kind of we walk along in life and how we're supposed to act. Each day I'll do a golden deed. By helping those who are in need, my life on earth is but a spell, and so I'll do the best I can. Life's evening sun is sinking low, a few more days. And I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun. The only light that will endure is one that's kind and good and pure, and so for God. Take my stand. Each day I'll lend a helping hand. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be setting sun, I'll help someone in time of need, and journey on with rapid speed, I'll help the sick 
and poor and weak, and words of kindness to them speak. Life's evening sun is sinking low, a few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun, while going down life's weary road, I'll try to lay some traveler's load. I'll try to turn the night to day. A flowers bloom. Along the way, life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun. Thank you, and welcome, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I trust that you are well. It's great. We've got a few guests. We're honored to have some guests that you would take some time and spend, the, spend this time, invest this time, that you would worship and explore God with us. And to our, our members, it's great to have each of you here. I hope all of us will enjoy Life Group. If you are a guest, don't have a place for Life Group, we will start them a little after 12 o'clock, there is one upstairs in the fellowship hall, and there's one with great food down in the basement. I'm part of that life group, so you'd be very welcome to join us there. Uh, just a couple of uh, announcements, or say Thanksgiving. Oh, and also for those online, we're glad that you're here. I um, want to say thank you for praying for our daughter Amber, who'd been in Nepal, had done something with Montana State University and sort of walking up approximately where base camp is for Mount Everest. Uh, she got uh, locked in in a fog at a real scary airport, so they had to helicopter her out, but she's safely back in Montana, so we're thankful for that. And I'm thankful for your prayers for my eyes. The doctor said that it is slowly getting better, um, but if you look at my left eye and see that it's black, it wasn't from Patty. Uh, it was from the last shot that the doctor gave me, so... Uh, I want to say thanks for your prayers. Also, a couple of reminders. One, October 29th is going to be a special day of, for a contribution here. Uh, we have, over the last number of years, we have blessed the community. We blessed Valley View and others who are not as fortunate as us with Thanksgiving baskets. And so October 29th is a special contribution. Be praying about uh, what God's putting on your heart to help those uh, that haven't been blessed as we have. And then any extra money beyond those Thanksgivings, we do help with the kids over at Valley View for um, Christmas gifts, and then we turn to the schools, Great Falls High and CMR. So October 29th will be a special contribution. And I do need to remind you that the Winter Rendezvous used to be in West Yellowstone. This year alone, it's in Cody, Wyoming, December 7th through the 10th. But if you're planning on going and don't register until November, you will have lost the special deal at the motels. So if you're planning on going to Cody for the Winter Rendezvous, please just go to the, it's CodyChurchOfChrist.org, so it's the Cody Church of Christ, and there is an easy button. You just punch that button, and it'll take all the registration information. So please do that quickly if you're planning on going. I appreciate the songs that uh, have been led this morning as it's uh, called us to, to think about Jesus and think about his life. 
There's probably a poem that you have used at least the first line, or at least thought the first line of this poem. And I'd like us to read it, or I'd like to read it to you this morning. It's by Edward Guest, I'd rather see a sermon. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes of better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing, but examples always clear. And the best of all the preachers, the men who live their creeds, for to see good put in action is what everybody needs. I soon can learn to do it if you'll let me see it done. I can watch your hands in action, but your tongue too fast may run. And the lecture you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do. For I might misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. When I see a deed of kindness, I'm eager to be kind. When I see a weaker brother stumble and a strong man stays behind, just to see if he can help him, then the wish grows strong in me to become as big and thoughtful as I know that friend to be. And all travelers can witness that the best of guides today is not the one who tells them, but the one who shows the way. I think Jesus would appreciate this. Now, the gospel telling is absolutely essential. But listen to some of the words of Jesus. Come, follow me. Or as Paul would, not Paul, but as Luke would write, one, in my former book, The Office, I wrote all about that Jesus began to do and to teach. It's not just Jesus. Peter understood this concept. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 12, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see what? Your good deed and glorify God on the day he visits us. And it's not just Jesus. It's not just Peter. Paul gets into the act. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Or as he writes to Timothy and says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself. And so as we turn the page to 1 Thessalonians, what has happened is Paul has been there for three Sabbath days before he gets run out. And I appreciate very much Matt's sermon last week as he helped us to see that it was probably more than just three weeks that he was there. He was probably a number of months. But imagine this for just a minute. If you're a Jew and you're, you become a Christian and you get chased out of the synagogue with Paul, there's probably very few that have any copies of the Old Testament text. And if you were one of the God-fearers who got chased out as well, it's really unlikely that you have any copies of the Old Testament text. There is no New Testament. And so where do you go? It seems that Paul had left. Some had given the gift of... God had given the gift of prophecy, because at the end of the letter, he's going to say, don't treat prophecy with contempt. But they couldn't pick up a Bible and read it. They didn't have it. And so what Paul reminds them and says about you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. So you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Paul had gone there and he has tried to reflect the image of Jesus Christ. And so our text today in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 is meant to deal with that idea of a reflection. Because it's not just Paul who's meant to reflect Jesus, it's meant to be every one of us. And this is a, an image of looking at the golf course in three forks as I'm sort of between the two pits. And you can see in that reflection trees and clouds and sort of snow in the mountains. 
It's not a perfect thing. And I would say that's pretty much true with all of us. Is when we try to reflect Jesus, it's not perfect. And Paul's reflection of Jesus was not perfect. But it was enough to see Jesus. It was enough to see Jesus. And so I'd like us to read together this text and hear what Paul has to say about his life that helped reflect Jesus to the Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 1. You know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dared to tell you this go- or his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives. Nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. You know we never used flattery. Oh, whoops. We are not trying, and this is part of the issue with my eyes. They don't always work as I'm reading still. So I'm going to pick up in verse 5 again, or verse 4. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We're not trying to please, we are trying, we're not trying to please men, but God, who tests our hearts. You know we never used flattery, nor do we put a mask on to cover up greed. God is our witness. We're not looking for praise from men, not from you, or from anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because, we, because you had become so dear to us. Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is in work, which is at work in you who believe. Here's some thoughts of what Paul's life looked like, but it really reflects the image of Jesus. He had a heart that pleases God, verse 4. I mean, that's where he's at. Fundamentally, he had been trying to please God when he was persecuting the Christians. When he meets Jesus on the road to Damascus, his whole perspective has changed, but not that heart that tries to please God. He recognizes he's going the wrong way and makes a repentance, change of mind, which leads to a change of action. He hears the gospel from Ananias and is baptized into Christ and is raised to live this new life and becomes this great apostle, this great missionary. He looks like Jesus. In John chapter 8 and verse 29, Jesus has been challenged by the religious leaders of his day about, who are you? And one of his responses is he just says, I always do what pleases my Father. We saw it in the garden. When he says, is it possible, Jesus is saying, if it's possible, let this cup, the crucifixion, pass from me. But he surrenders and he says, not my will be done, but yours. Paul is reflecting the image of Jesus, and as he reflects the image of Jesus, it's that image that the Thessalonians are remembering. Oh yeah, at our our heart level, we we have to make a decision that we're going to please God. Not, Not what I feel, not what I want, but we go to God's revelation and say, God, what are you calling me to do? We not only see a heart that pleases God, but we see this tender care. I love the image there. 
as a, as a nursing mother with her child. And we've got a number of moms with little ones that they're nursing within our congregation. And it's that, that image of, of tenderness and, and that willingness to, to invite somebody into your life. Paul, in this, when he talks about that tender care, we loved you so much. We not only shared the gospel, we shared our lives as well. Paul is pointing out that, that he was willing to come into their life. Well, maybe a different way to put it. Paul was willing to open up his arms and his life that the Thessalonians could come. It's a concept of hospitality. I think what Paul is pointing out here is that if we're going to be people of influence, we can't expect people to just hear what we say, but you know, our coworkers and our neighbors and oh, our friends and other family members, we, we need to open up our homes and open up our hearts. And say, come and share a meal with us. Come and have a cup of coffee with me. Let's just spend some time. I, I want to get to know you. I, I want to have this gentleness among you. Jesus did the same thing, didn't he? He says, I am lowly and gentle of heart. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I think there's something for us as we look to the last part of this year and to next year. We have, <laughs> we have an election coming up. We have a Senate election in the state of Montana. We have a House of Representatives election, and we have a presidential election. Let's look like Jesus in everything we do. Social media, posts, relationships. Have that kind of tender care that just that, that really models Jesus in everything that we do. Because we don't look like, very much like Jesus when we get in these ugly arguments about politics. And Paul looks like Jesus because of his tenderness. Paul also, in verses 9 through 10, he, did you catch what both Tim and I shared with you from the text? Surely, brothers, surely you remember, brothers, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how holy, righteous, and blameless we were in you who believed. Paul is going to have to deal with the whole issue of holiness a little bit later on in their lives. But he's pointing out, hey, look at Timothy's life, look at Silas's life, look at my life. Holy, meaning separate, set apart. Not perfect, but not hypocritical either. A holiness and a righteousness and a blameless that reflects Jesus who never sinned, who ne never stumbled. Now, are we perfectly? No. We're going to be more of that reflection that's got some fuzziness in there. We're saved by grace. But that's what we're meant to reflect. Paul says, I'm reflecting that, and that's what you guys are saying in Thessalonica, and that's what you guys are living out. A good life. But he also says, you know, we're a lot like a dad. <laughs> we're like a father to you. Encouraging. Comforting. And urging. Okay, so, go back in your memory. For some of us, it's a long way back. <laughs> We stumble, we fall, we scrape our elbow, we put our hand down, and we've got a road rash, and we run to the house. Who do we go to, mom or dad? Mom. <laughs> mom pulls out the Band-Aid, she does the kisses, she does all of that kind of stuff. It's that comforting, welcome, come on in. And what does dad say? You get up and go back out there. You're gonna, it's not going to kill you. If it doesn't kill you, it's going to make you stronger. I mean, dad's had this responsibility of coming along and saying, okay, I know mom has comforted you, but you can't just sit this in the cocoon. You need to get out and you need to do some stuff. And Paul's recognizing 
We've got to have both of those going on. There's care, yes, but there are times where we push people forward for the glory and honor of God. Did Jesus do that? When he had to rebuke Peter, didn't he say, get behind me, Satan? You don't have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Or when he would say, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. He, he challenges us to go higher, and yet he also, on the one hand, has this care and invites us. And Paul's saying, I, I did that with you. If we jumped ahead to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he's going to tell the entire church to do that towards one another. That encouraging and that comforting and that urging. And then he says, I'm thankful. I give thanks continually. I appreciate it so much last week as Matt really honed in on this idea of thanksgiving. It shows up in chapter 1 and verse 2. Always giving thanks. Or how about chapter 2 and verse 13, what we just read. We give thanks to God continually. There's, there's two challenging words there. Always and continually. Thanksgiving isn't just sort of a uh, every once in a while. Now, when Timothy shows back up in chapter 3, Paul says, how can I thank God enough? But because of his example, you come to the last part of chapter 5, and he says, give thanks in all circumstances. In other words, what, what Paul is modeling here is that something for the entire church at Thessalonica to follow. And so I'd like to leave us with this image, this thought. A stick figure here. And this was one of these freebies. I didn't draw this. I can't draw that good. <laughs> Paul is reflecting what he sees in Jesus, and that's first and foremost a heart that pleases God. Not my will be done, but yours. And then in one hand, I, I care for you like a nursing mom. I, I, I really do care, and I'm going to open up my life. And, and then he goes down to his feet, and he talks about how he lives as, as one who works hard, but is holy, and is blameless, and is righteous. And then he holds up the other hand and says, you know, I'm like a dad. I'm, I'm going to urge you. Know, I'm, I'm going to encourage and I'm going to comfort, but I'm going to ur urge you to get on. But in his mind, he's always giving thanks. Well, they're not exactly where they need to be yet. And that's very clear when you get to chapter 4 and chapter 5. They're not, but that doesn't stop him from giving thanks. That thanksgiving overflows in everything because we know, Paul knows, God knows, we're not all that we need to be. But by the grace of God, we've been saved by grace and we are walking to becoming more and more like Christ. And so as we conclude, we think about the sermon. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. Maybe I should say the world would rather see a sermon than hear one any day. They'd rather us walk with them than merely tell the way. And so what sermon is our life preaching? Today, maybe you've, <laughs> you've been way off track. And we give an opportunity if you're wanting to turn your life that there, maybe there's some, some sin in there or something that, that you've been wrestling with but you haven't been able to co overcome just on your own. James would tell us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other that you might be healed. Forgiveness is going to come from God, but boy, we need each other for healing and overcoming sin. Or maybe today you're like I was. On a Thursday night in... August of 1978, I discovered that I needed to be baptized into Christ. And I wrestled with that throughout the week. I'd gone and seen, not Patty, but another girl I was dating at that time and said, hey, there's water in the creek behind your house. If you baptize me and I baptize you, maybe we'll be right. And she said, why don't you ask somebody? 
So, good advice. So I asked Scott Lucasson, and he gave me all these verses on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night. I'd never been to a Wednesday night service, but I went that, and they gave this invitation. They, they said that anybody who's ready to be baptized into Christ, to be immersed in water, to have your sins forgiven, and to receive the Holy Spirit, come on down. And so I did. And they all stared at me like, who are you? <laughs> we haven't been studying long enough with you. Who are you? But I was so thankful for that invitation because August 9th, 1978, my life went from darkness to light, from lost to saved, because Jesus had already stole my heart. And I wanted to look like him. And today I still want to look more and more like him. And it helps when I have an example like Paul, or I have an example like many of you. So today, if you, want, if you need help in looking more and more like Jesus, or you want to start this walk, why don't you come? Just together we stand and sing. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, trying to love our Savior and King, shaping our lives by His great and example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Let him pass up light, pressing more closely to him who is leading when we are tempted to turn from the way. Trusting the arm that is strong to defend us, happy, how happy our praises each day. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let him pass up light. Walking in footsteps of gentle forbearance, footsteps of faithfulness, mercy, and love. Looking to him for the grace freely promised, happy, how happy our journey above. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let him pass up light. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior, upward, still upward, will follow our guide. When we shall see him, the King, in his beauty, happy, how happy, our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let him pass of light. Thank you, Scott, for that message. I'm going to remember this. Okay? We, we are people of the Lord, and he asks us to step out. And uh, I just uh, am so thankful for that, that image. Um, because it tells us all the things we can do if we remember he wants us to be out in the world. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we thank you so very much for your care for us. Father, that you, uh, that you have nurtured us along and you've, uh, you've provided the milk and then the meat. 
Lord, that we might know you, that we might reach out to the people around us, and that we might uh, provide opportunities, uh, that we might play a part, Lord God, in their salvation. Not that we are the ones that, uh, that determine that, Lord God, that it's between you and them. But Father, I pray that you'll help us to be the instruments that uh, go forward. I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for the, the, the time of, of singing today and, and praising you. And I pray that the things we've done here today has been pleasing to you. Father, we have a few requests that we, we uh, call on you for uh, that have come our way. One is Jay Augustine's family, and uh, they would like prayers. Jay is having a PET scan uh, the third week of October, and, uh, to, and we're, we're praying, Lord God, that his cancer is in remission. Uh, uh, Diane uh, will have knee surgery on October 25th. We pray for her and for the doctors that care for her, that they'll be gentle, and Lord God, that she can, uh, uh, that she can receive some healing that will help her to function better. Uh, Father, we pray that you be with Troy as he's gone to uh, have some stitches this morning in his hand. He had a mishap while well, doing the dishes. He says that doing dishes can be difficult. Uh, Father, pray that you will just watch over him and, and help him to heal well. Please be with uh, Jean Johnson as uh, she's dealing with breast cancer. And she's uh, needing uh, to know that we care, but, but she also needs your guiding hand upon her that she might heal well and, and that she'll come through this well and that uh, her testimony will be one of strength and, and encouragement for all of us. I just pray for all of us today as we go forward into the world that uh, we might, uh, as our sign says out front, see this as a mission field and that we might reach out to those around us and that we do that through our examples, through the way we act, the way we, the way we, uh, uh, our hearts, Lord God. You say your heart, our hearts are pleasing to God, tender heart care, a good life, upward call and thanksgiving. I just pray that you bless us with all of those things, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, to be like the blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures, Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender and kind. Helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering sinner to find. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, lowly in spirit, holy and harmless, patient and brave, meekly enduring cruel reproaches, willing to suffer others to save. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image deep on my heart. Oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming, now to receive the anointing divine. All that I am and have I am bringing, Lord, from this moment all shall be thine. Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stand thine own image, keep on my heart.
dismissed. God bless you.